Hebrews 11 verse 7 By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. Welcome to Chronicles Ministries and come with me and look back into scripture so that we can be reminded in order that we may move forward and move forward in hope. Now we find the account of Noah, as you already probably know, in the book of Genesis. And Moses, uh, being the writer, may have either written it before the Israelites left Egypt or, or when they were in the wilderness. And either way, God had his people on the move. Moses wrote Genesis to prepare Israel. He wrote it to prepare Israel for the future by reminding them of the past. The reminder was in order to bring strength, courage, determination, and hope. So let's hop in, actually, right into Genesis. And um, I'm actually going to read Genesis 6, verse 5 to 9. So join me if you like. But uh, Genesis 6, verse 5 to 9. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground. For I regret that I have made them, but... There's a but here, and it's a big but. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. So we can see from this, um, just from this one little piece right here, and I encourage you to go back and read all of chapter 6 and all of chapter 7, but we can see that the earth was corrupt and full of violence. The people had corrupted their ways, and generally they did not want a relationship with God. They insisted. They insisted on independence. And God said to Noah... I am going to put an end to all people, so make yourself an ark. In Genesis 6, verse 14 to 16, we see very clear instructions given on how to build the ark. And then in Genesis 6, verse 19 to 21, we see clear instructions on what Noah was to bring in the ark with him. He was going to bring his, his wife, his sons, and their wives, but he was also to bring animals and food. Now, we know from scripture that it took Noah 120 years to build what God had asked him to build. And moving forward into the New Testament, we see in 1 Peter verse 3 verse, tw- 3 verse 20 that God waited patiently while Noah built the ark. He waited 120 years before sending the flood in Noah's day. Moving on, uh, back to clear instructions, commands, God-giving commands, in 7 verse 9, we see that animals, creatures, male and female, came. They came to Noah and entered the ark just as God had commanded. Side note, when God gives a command, he also gives the ability to fulfill what he has commanded. Look at right there in 7 verse 9. What happened? The animals came. 6 verse 22, we read that Noah did everything just as God had commanded. 7 verse 1, the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, because I have found you righteous in this generation. He is telling Noah to come into the ark of safety. And then 7, verse 16, a hard verse. Then the Lord shut him in. God was going to bring judgment. The rain did come. And Noah escaped only by God's provision of salvation. And we see that in the picture of the ark. Going back to the very first um, uh, passage that I read to you, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 7, we read about Noah's faith and his complete obedience to God. Now the faith of Noah was based on God's warning 
his warning that he was going to destroy the the world with a flood. And we see that in uh, Genesis 6, verse 17. And let me just read that to you. God said, I am going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish. Noah was warned of something that had never happened before. There had never been a flood in human history. In fact, there is reason to believe, according to Genesis 2, verse 5 and 6, there is reason to believe that there had never been rainfall up to this time. Noah, we read, he stood alone. Another little side note here. It is possible, it is possible, therefore, to be right with God, to have heard right from God, to be obedient to God, even though we have to stand alone. Interesting to note that Noah did not go with the general feel of the land. He chose God. He chose to believe God. Noah was asked to believe rain was going to come. And his faith was shown in not merely agreeing, agreeing that the flood would come, but in doing what God had told him to do regarding the flood. Noah moved in godly fear. Noah's actions showed faith to all around him. Noah's actions show faith to you and I all these years later. Now, interesting to note that God invited Noah into the ark once again. I hope you see this. Once again, we see God's initiative, just as he did with Adam, and just as he did with you and I. To Adam, God called out, where are you? And to Noah, God calls out, come. God called out and said, come into the ark, where you will find safety, and your life will be preserved. The invitation to come does run throughout the um, the whole Bible. And the last offer is found in Revelations 22, verse 17. Let me read that to you. It says, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes to take the free gift of water come. God extends the invitation to people, and he urges us to take advantage of the perfect provision he has made for our preservation. There is impending judgment, and that is not something we like to talk about, but it's truth. Noah prepared for things to come. How? By building an ark. He did not live in the present. By continuing to believe the promises of God, even though those around him disbelieved him, believed him and the promises, there was going to be a flood. Noah's faith led to the preservation of life. If you will, picture the ark as a picture of Christ. And if you will, picture the water as a picture of God's judgment. And if you will, Picture those in the ark as a picture of those being saved from judgment. Noah and his family being saved from God's judgment. Picture yourself, myself, you and I being saved from God's judgment. Noah believed and built an ark. Doubtless, doubtless that, doubtless that he was the brunt of many jokes, jabs, and mocking. Have you ever been? the brunt of many jokes, jabs, and mocking. Do you believe God anyways? Are you moving forward in faith and obedience anyways? Noah was obedient, and he and his family were saved from destruction. Noah's faith gave him life. Your faith, my faith, gives us life. He found favor in God's eyes and sought and found refuge in the ark. And hear me well, hear me well. He rode safely above the storm of God's wrath and judgment. He went into the ark. God came to Noah just as he came to Adam. 
God had a plan to save Noah, just as he had a plan to save Adam. God gave clear instructions on how to be saved, build an ark. It took faith. Come inside. It took faith. God is the one who saves. Noah walked with God. Noah heard God. Are you walking with God? Are you able to hear God? Noah did exactly what God commanded, even though what he commanded was hard work, 120 years worth of hard work, far beyond what my human mind can grasp or fathom. And even though those around him did not believe what he was saying, and even though Noah may have looked foolish, he still did exactly what God commanded. Noah had to have faith. He had to have faith in God, and he had to have faith in what God said, and he had to have faith that God would bring to pass all that he promised. God did bring judgment, and he will once again. And we see that actually many times, but I'll just simply go to Revelations 19 verse 11. And it says this, I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a, was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful, capital letter, it's a person. And true, capital letter, true, it's a person. A rider who's called, who's called Faithful and True with justice, he wages war. But... But we do not need to stay there in this verse. We do not need to stay there in this truth because there was an ark. God called Noah into the ark, the place of safety, the place where death would not be permitted. God said, come. And I want us all to note that God shut the door. 7 verse 16 says, then the Lord shut him in. The shutting of the door is God's job, not ours. Just as in the day of Noah, God is waiting patiently, but he will return. Just like Noah, our God has given us clear, concise instruction. He has shown us the way into the safety of the ark, if you will. It's God's initiative. He is calling. Come, come into the ark. Jesus, Jesus is our ark. Step in. Step in. Noah lived. And he lived because he believed what God had promised. And he moved accordingly 120 years. Do you move through your life believing what God has promised? Is your faith in what God has said and done driving you forward day by day? You and I live because we believe what God has promised. Let's simply look at John 3 verse 6 to 8, 16 to 18 where it says, and you know it, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him, the ark. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, you're in the ark. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son, Jesus. Now do those around you see you moving in ways that shows great measures of faith? Is God asking you to trust him far beyond what you are able to understand? What has he asked you to build, so to speak? Just like, Mo just like Noah, being told there was going to be rain, from a human perspective, impossible, mock-worthy really, is God asking you to trust what you cannot see or understand? First and foremost, be reminded that just as Noah had to get in the ark in order to be saved from death, a picture of eternal death, God had shown him the way. God has shown us the way. Be reminded be reminded that the only way for you and I to be saved from eternal death, saved for, so saved from, but saved for life eternal, is to get in the ark, if you will, the ark of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> 
He is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and life. He is your life, and He is my life, and we are found safely in Him, period. There is no other way. Do you believe that? Do you live your life with that truth at the very center? Does that truth drive you? Jesus, our ark, is the only way to life. Now, standing firmly on this truth, this identity, where is God asking you to trust Him? Where is God asking you to trust Him with your whole being? Because it's usually where it counts. Is it with your child? Is He asking you to trust Him with what He has promised you concerning your child? Are your eyes seeing something quite different than what you know? You know that you know God has promised you. Has God asked you to trust you with his marriage? Has he asked you to trust him with your job? With your joy, your peace, your health? Or has he asked you to trust him with your very placement, your station in life? Does any of it or all of it seem impossible? Are you standing alone in the promises God has given you? Hammer on, my friends. Build what God has asked you to build. What has he asked you to build? Faith. Hammer on. God is trustworthy. Yes, yes, the rain did come. And yes, it was judgment. But I also want us all to be reminded that the rain also represents God's faithfulness. He means and does what he says. Hammer on. And watch as you work out your faith. Look for his faithfulness. Let those around you see your faith no matter what the cost. No matter the mocking or the joking or the jabbing. Because the rain will come. But you are safe. You are safe in the ark of Christ. It is finished. Jesus cried out in John 19, verse 30, You have life, I have life, and we will ride above the judgment storm of Jesus. And while we walk through this world, trust the promises given to you, promises of a life of joy, peace, and promises of complete fulfillment for all the things promised, not only for the church at large, but to each of us in the quiet times of bowing before our faithful, promise-keeping God. Last week, we read that God came to Adam, knowing full well what Adam had done, but came anyways, and God called out, Where are you? And he has called out to you and I, where are you? And this week we are reminded that God came to Noah and called out, not this time, where are you? But come, come into safety. God has come to seek us. He has offered forgiveness, life eternal, and relationship. God is calling out, come, come into the safety of the ark and live through the life of God's son, Jesus. God is the faithful one. Moses wrote Genesis to prepare Israel for the future by reminding them of the past. God gave us Genesis for the future by reminding of us, reminding us of the past. A reminder in order to bring strength, courage, determination, and hope. Hammer on, my friends. You and I, we belong to the faithful one. Move on in hope.